I want to still go from there and just let God. And I, I, I pray that everybody spiritually will be focused and paying attention to what the Spirit of the Lord was have to say. Do not allow. We just rebuke and we will not allow any spirit of distraction to hinder anyone from hearing what the Spirit of the Lord has to say this evening. Because I want us to understand that God is truly preparing us. Amen. He's, he's preparing his sons and daughters. And, and, and he's telling his sons and daughters his time. We talked about rising up. And I, I want to, and we found out this morning to rise up. I, and and it's, I didn't know this this morning. And it's interesting that God revealed it to me as this evening, um, where we're going this evening, that I, that I, um, the, the correlation between um, what he, when he says rise up to where he's taken us in reference to, we always say I've, the vision of this ministry is to become the kingdom of God and to become the kingdom of God and, and he, he took me there this evening and I thought it was so interesting how he is going to break this down. He says, okay the vision of the ministry without a vision the people perish. So God said the vision of, a, of, of the ministry is to become the kingdom and Jesus would say the kingdom if they say go over here, go over there, don't go he said for the kingdom of God is at hand for the kingdom of God is within who? Us. But how many of us know that the, for the kingdom of God to be in us, we, we, we know that the Bible says, if you have not my spirit, you are none of mine. And then he says, but my spirit, brethren, with, with your spirit, and it cries out, Abba. Amen. So the process in the spirit, when we talk about the kingdom of God, is when we talk about the, um, you know, becoming the kingdom of God. And the kingdom, I like that word, king and dom, kingdom. That means the king having domain. And, uh, and we say, the kingdom come, thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And God preached not too long ago, a couple of weeks ago, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So as it is in he heaven, and we found out, okay, that God says it, um, to know how the kingdom look on earth, you got to have a peak in heaven, amen? And what's interesting about we we got a, a review of it when we went to Revelation and we saw the 24 elders and we and it was something about the elders that was interesting um, that on, um, in Revelation that the elders they had crowns on their head they were men of authority and that the men of authority in heaven what they did um, and this is where God took me to get a view of the kingdom of heaven because remember now and, and, and when John the Revelation saw heaven he saw the 24 elders he saw the four beasts he saw the seven angels he saw I mean the seven spirits he saw all this but one God took me about well, how should it look on earth as it is in heaven? And God began to show me that the 24 elders, when and the majesticness of, of God on the, on, out upon the throne, you saw it was like they described them as precious jewels. You know what I'm saying? That the, the, it was like emeralds and diamonds. In other words, when they got set up on the throne, it was as great, it was of great jewels, great value. Up on the, and the value was so great up on the throne that when the angels who were in heaven began to say, holy, 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 the 24 elders took off their, throne, took off their crown. Everybody say their crown, say authority. And they laid it before the Father, they, they, they laid before the throne of God. And God says how it should be on earth as it is in heaven is to be able to take off your authority, humble yourself, and lay it before the Father. And Jesus is a perfect example in which who, who is the, the image. How many, know, how many of us know that Jesus is the image of the invisible God? When you say, that's why Jesus said, when you see me, you see the Father. He said, I am the image. And then Jesus would say stuff like, Jesus said things in this manner. When uh, I say nothing on my own, I do nothing on my own. I only do what I see the Father say to him. So he shows himself as being one who denied himself. Now watch this. You see the 24 elders humble themselves. Because right after you humble yourself, you will deny yourself. So when we're talking about becoming the kingdom, becoming the kingdom of God on earth, we have to move with a position, position of humility. Because humility, because we have to come to him as a child, one that is humble, being able to take off our authority and submit to the supreme authority. And then we see Jesus who says, I only do what I see my father. He denies himself and begins, he denies himself and follows who? The father. Amen. Then Jesus says, then Jesus, who was our example of the kingdom, he says to reign with me is to suffer. He says there's a suffering. And I want, and then we see Jesus explain this to Peter, that, that the son of man must suffer these things. So we notice something about the being coming the kingdom. First thing about becoming the kingdom, that you must be humble. 
you have to come to him as a child. Humility is a total requirement because why this? Because well, without being humble, see the opposite of humble is pride. And when we don't, how many of you all of us need to understand this? Before we had Christ, we were very prideful. We were self-serving. We was about self. Amen. And to come to him, he said, we must come as a child. We must come not trying to tell him how old I am, not trying to tell him your education, not trying. Matter of fact, don't tell God anything about you that's going to be, because there's nothing about you that's going to be impressive to God. You are, we, you and I, we are sinners. Amen. Saved by grace through faith. How many, can I get an amen? In other words, a sinner cannot offer anything to a holy God. So recognizing who you come to will cause you to be humble. Recognizing, see, recognizing who you, you and I need to recognize. See, the problem is we may not stay humble if we come into church. Because you may be like, well, I ain't got to be humble to the past. I'm a man just like him, a man. But recognizing who that man of God is leading you to when he preached Christ Jesus. Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And there is no other way back to the but by me. So therefore, understanding who Jesus is leading you to will bring you to a place of humility. Why? Because you understand that you and I have nothing in ourselves to make it back to him. Your education can't make it back to him. You can't buy your way back to him. You don't have enough knowledge to, 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 edu no, to go back to him. So the only way to come back to him is in a way of humility. Why? Because in humility, you have to accept the gift that was given to you. In other words, you could do nothing, but somebody had to, it's, you have to be humble to take a gift. You got to be humble as a man, especially as men, because we used to doing our own. We used to trying to, you no, know, men are used to trying to build things and make things happen. And, you know, wanna, so you have to be humble as a man to understand that you can do nothing to get yourself to a place of salvation, but accept the gift that was given to you. And in the gift that was given to you, which, which is Christ, I say Christ Jesus. Then you had to learn through him by watching him in the relationship with the father that you have to deny yourself. Because Jesus sought no reputation, though he could have been tried to be one who tried to gravitate to the power, to the attention to himself, but he would never do that. He never did that. He would deny, he would always bring glory to the Father. He denied himself and always brought glory to the Father. Amen. But then Jesus said, okay, but to follow me, you got to understand that there's going to be some suffering involved. I need y'all, and we need to understand this when it comes to the point of rising up. Everybody understand? To rise up, we must understand the process. And understanding the process, understand that, that God wants to take you to a place of humility. God wants to teach you to deny yourself. And then God wants to teach you, then God says, I'm going to teach you how to walk through suffering. Because the problem, let me tell you something about suffering. See, many of us have not really truly un understood suffering because we always had a side deal. See, you don't have to, you don't really get the full understanding of suffering when you take side deals. Why? Because when you take a side deal, you're too high to take, you're too high to understand the full, uh, uh, what it is to, to suffer for righteousness. Because you're not going to stand. And you're not, you're, you're too busy to suffer for righteousness because you know you, you're trying to build you. You're too, you too much indulged in sex and pleasure. You're too indulged in pleasure to understand righteousness. In other words, a side deal will cause you not to understand the full capacity of what your strength is. Because why? I don't, have to get, I, don't I don't have to understand my strength, the strength of God inside of me when I'm taking a side deal and won't really deal with the situation that's facing me. We love to take side deals. Say, they try to get Jesus to take a side deal. If you be the son of man, get off the cross. Take a side deal. Come on down and prove who you are. I'm so glad he knew who he was. Amen. Understand this. Why is this important? Because without understanding this, Without understanding the point of that, the reason, we talk about reason, nothing can rise unless it dies. So God is calling a church to risen. And I want to give you what God gave me to. You see, when it, because when something is risen, I want you to say, when, one, when, one, um, when something is risen, now it can produce something. When, when, st when something is willing to die first, and it, it has to go through the process, then when it's risen, now it's in a position to produce something. Everybody, I want you to remember that. Everybody understand that? Once it has died, it's now in a position to produce something. You are, you are with me. We found out this morning, we, we looked at, we kind of looked at scriptures this morning, we looked at uh, uh, Matthew 23, 12. Humble like He said, he who humbles himself shall be exalted, and he who exalts himself shall be made humble. Either way, God going to get his plan done. 
You can do it. You can humble yourself or God will do it for you. He's going to get it done. Amen. And then we found out this morning that what it says, Matthew 16, 24, deny yourself and pick up your cross, right, and follow me. So that he says, once you humble yourself, he said, follow me. In other words, no longer be the dictator of your life. Let God, let Jesus Christ be Lord of your life. Follow. Let the word be a light to your feet and a lamp unto your path. Be in communion with God through Christ, through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Then we found out the last one. It says First Peter, and I love First Peter. First Peter five ten says, read, read, read. "After we have what?" He says, after. "Now he tells you." He said, "After you have suffered for a while." He said, "You can't get out." The, he said, "Number one, for me to be able to use you, for me able to be produce something from you. How many of you know?" We, and we found out this morning that unless you, unless a grain, a, a, a grain of coin fall to the ground first, it abided alone. So your greatness is in your ability to come down. Your great, the greatness is in you. It's your ability to allow God to begin to take you through the process, to humble you, that you begin to deny yourself and understand, go through the process of suffering. When they persecute you for his name, suffer, rejoice. No, no, no. In other words, because the more you can suffer and not take a side deal, the more God can be glorified in you. And I like, and there were some four points when he talked about it. He said one of the points were being perfected, right? He said, watch this. He said, after you suffer for a while, you can be perfected. Means this suffering that I'm going to take you through is to mature you. Because when I have to face a situation without taking a side deal, I'm going to become mature in strength. I'm going to become mature in how? I'm going to become mature in the wisdom of God's word on how to handle this situation. Amen. Then he says, establish you. He says, don't, I, say, I don't want you establishing yourself because you will try to establish yourself before you suffer. Come on. You will try to establish things before you suffer because you will try to establish yourself in your own wisdom, in your own strength. But your own wisdom and strength don't have, don't have what it takes to stand through the storms of life. And it will not be a place. Remember now, it, and you will not become a place that someone else can benefit from you. When it's in your own wisdom and in your own knowledge, you are not a place that someone else can benefit from you. Because guess what? As soon as things start going wrong, the attitude, the, the, the attitude and uh, how you deal with things will come out. I once knew a young lady that God showed her that she was going to lead many people to church. And uh, there was a line following her to church. But then God showed her in the same dream because, he, because she wouldn't let God, because she wouldn't let God bury her. Because, in other words, she had, watch this, she had this anointing. How I many know gifts come without repentance? She had this ability, this zeal to lead people to church. But who she was as a person, the people she leads, she was going to turn them away from God. To me, if God, if God give you a dream like that, you might want to pay attention. And, and the dream was so plain, she knew exactly what it meant. Because her temper, her attitude, her unforgiveness for people was gone. In other words, her un because she was not established. Because what he said after I establish you? She had no strength. See, when, you don't, when God has not made you mature, when he has not established you and you have no strength, guess what happens? You are not a safe place for a soul. Amen? See, that's why we say the vision is to become the kingdom. Because until you become, how are you going to become? If, you're, if you have not allowed God to begin to take, to humble you, that you got to the place where you can deny you, where you can now deal with suffering so God can build you. Build you for what? For what? For what? For others. That's, remember now, we got the word this morning was rise up. Become great. See, to rise up, you, to become great means you got to go down. I said this morning that that seed, that no matter how much greatness was in that seed, into it go into that dirty ground. And it's like God's word. His word is seed, right? But when that seed go into this dirt, it should be, that seed is so powerful that it should be able to transform what it's going into. 
But for that, when that seed, but for that seed to go into that dirt, you got to humble yourself. You got to be able to deny yourself. You got to be able to go through the process. He said to reign with him. Reign means to be in authority with him, to be in power with him. You have to suffer with him. You cannot, you cannot bail out you. If you bail out of the suffering, if you get up off the cross, you can't produce nothing. Amen? He says to suffer with him. Why? So he can perfect you, establish you, strengthen you, and settle you. But he says, watch this, these, they, how many of y'all know these words are very powerful when you are moving in a position to rise up. When you're moving in a position to produce fruit or seed, it is very powerful for a person to be what? To be mature, to be established, to be strengthened, and to be settled. But God says those things do not come until after you go through suffering. It was great suffering for Abraham to take Isaac to the top. Come on, come on. You waited all this time for your son, and God says, take him up and sacrifice him. That was great suffering. You're going to try to tell me you think Abraham, he was a man of light passion just like you and I. You think he was skipping to the top? I heard somebody say this morning in discipleship class, sometimes we forget that they were human just like us. I think that Abraham was probably in great anguish on the way taking his son up to the sacrifice. He was in great dilemma, but guess what he desired? But there was no, that, in other words, he was mature enough through his process. He was established enough in God. He was strengthened enough by God. And God has settled him enough to be able to trust God to take the thing he loved the most to sacrifice it. And then it was only after that that God says, now I know. That watch it. Now I know what. You got to get what he's about to say. Abraham was about to be entrusted as the father of many nations. Now I know you can produce something. Y'all better get that. Now I know you can produce. See, we like to say that part. Now I know uh, that you will hold him. He said, well, what was he testing him for? To see if he can produce something. To see if he can be the kingdom. Because in the kingdom, see, I'm going to tell you something. Jesus got a problem about things that don't produce something in the kingdom. Jesus walked by a tree and it wouldn't produce anything. Right. Jesus said, hold up, hold up, hold up. In the kingdom, in the kingdom where there's living water. Yes. In the kingdom when a word is spoken. No, it has to be produced. He said if the vine don't produce any what? He said, cut it off. It must. He said, in my kingdom, there is no such thing as five, ten years, fifteen years as a good church goer. There is no such thing as just keep going back to church over and over again with never getting to a place where you can build something, where you can produce something. It's not, God says, I know what sometimes, I don't know about you, but I get grieved a little bit. I don't know what is inside. I get grieved a little bit at some of the songs that always See, some of our songs are always crying and moaning and, and praying and begging for God's attention, for God to feel us. I said, when God, can, we, can we get somebody past the place where you're begging for God, uh, where you're begging for God's uh, mercy and God's grace? Can we get somebody to get full and not can produce something? Because I want to tell you, don't get me wrong, don't get me, don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. We, 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 go, through this, we go through this process and, and through the process we're being broken and, and we're being developed. But God says, you know what? I'm looking to, because uh, he's, I notice uh, when he says rise up, he's talking, about, I'm, he's talking about, I need a change. I need to get somebody past just always sitting in church with your struggle. I need somebody that I can bring you to for their struggle. I need to bring you to, I need to be able to have you to produce something for somebody else. See, the problem is, we have songs and things and producing a society in this false gospel of self-serving, never looking to understand God's fulfillment of his plan. If you look at God's word, everybody who humbled themselves, everybody who denied themselves, everybody who suffered was always for somebody else. Joseph, <laughs> oh, Joseph, uh, Joseph was a mighty man of God. <laughs> Joseph had a dream and told his brothers and his mom, told his brothers and family, I, I saw you bow down to me. They got angry 
at Joseph. His brothers became, I'm going to tell you a lot of times, when God take you through the process, people are going to get angry on your pathway to God's greatness. And, 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 but that's a part of God's plan. You don't understand. Your haters are meant to be. God gave you haters. Don't hate your haters because they're going to produce the love in you that you need to become great. He said, Joseph, they, his brothers got mad at him. He came out. They're bringing orders. And Joseph had favor because I'm going to tell you, when God first started, you ever, you ever know what he said? Hey, oh, my God, she always the one to get the prophecy. She always the one that God's speaking to. They always the one. That's how Joseph was at first. He was one. Ah, oh, I got dreams. You always got the dreams. God showed me in all white linen. And, and so God showed me pastoring to the multitude. And, and all things look good. And God said, okay, now I have shown you what I've, show, I've, I've shown you what you're going to be. Now let me show you how to humble yourself. Throw them in the well. Throw them in the well. Throw them in the well. Throw him, his brothers. Now you gotta understand something. You gotta understand this is one of the most painful things ever because he's being thrown in the well by his family. It would have been better if it would have been a stranger. It would have been better if it had been somebody I don't know. But who I watch it. See, we don't understand a human like us. He grew up with his brothers. He played ball with his brothers. He sat and ate dinner with his brothers. He communed with them day and night with his brothers. And yet, because he had to go through the process, his brothers threw him in a, in a well. And then his brothers pulled him out of the well because God had mercy and said, you know what? They sold him into slavery. Come on, to be sold by your brothers? I understand. In Africa, it's one thing to go and let the white man capture. It's another thing that the sanctity. Some of us think it was just a white man. No, it wasn't. It was Africans over there selling the other Africans too. There's another thing, one who got your own kin skin color selling you into slavery. And now he's in slavery, and now he's in part of his house. But guess what? Right attitude, yeah. right position caused him to prosper as a servant. I believe that he had to hold on to his dreams and visions. And when he was in part of his house, guess what? He did he go again. And now part of his wife wants some candy. And she goes after him. And then she goes after him. And he ended up at the end of the dilemma saying that he knows that he can have all the things. He has so many things in his master's house. But he knew better to touch the thing that was not his. But yet, the thing that was not his wanted to touch him. And then that became false accusations. I'm still on the same sermon. I want you to understand the part about humbling and denying yourself. Because it would have been easy for, for Joshua not to deny himself at that moment. Joseph. It would have been easy for Joseph not to deny himself at that moment because guess what? The sin was knocking on his door. In other words, he was not approaching her. She was approaching him. And it would have been easy for Joseph to say, you know what? Hey, now for me to stand good standings with God, I might as well go ahead and do this. But Joseph knew his God would not condone that. And next thing you know, he's accused of things he has not done. See, you got to understand to humble yourself tonight. You can't be fighting with somebody because you didn't do it. You just got to go and understand the process. Because I believe at that point when he was being accused, that's suffering. It had to be suffering. He went from part of his house to the prison. I don't know. See, maybe we're thinking that the prison, the prison back then is like it is today. No, there is no cable. There's no three meals a day. And the workout, guess what? And the bench you're going to be sitting on working out is on rocks. So he went to a place, but he still, because he stayed in position, he excelled at that place too. What, I'm, what do I want you to see? He was being in a position to rise up. But he had to die. He had to humble himself, deny himself, and suffer. But when he was being risen up, it was for his. It was for Israel, who was going to be stuck in a famine. So if God is telling us it's time to rise up, he we must have some people stuck in a famine. If God is telling. It's time for his sons and daughters to rise up. Then we must have some people who's in bondage to Pharaoh. 
to the worldly system. If God is calling for a rise up, then there must be somebody that needs to see the glory of God. So he says, I, I, I want you to become, the vision is to become the kingdom. So to become the kingdom, I need to humble you. I need you to teach you to deny yourself. And I need you to teach you how to stand through suffering. I need to teach you how to be mature, establish, strengthen, and settle through suffering. Then you will be ready. Now, but the second part of the mission, the mission statement is to build the kingdom. I can't build something <clears throat> that I have not become. Anybody see what God is trying to, what God has done? Our vision is to become the kingdom. Our mission is to build the kingdom. But I first must become what I'm called to reproduce. But to become it, I have to humble myself. I have to deny myself and to be able to go through suffering. See, some of us are about to be disqualified too. Because you won't humble yourself. You don't deny yourself. And you don't, and you don't, and you don't like to suffer for his name's sake. And God is not removing those qualifications in his kingdom. Because that was Jesus' qualifications for you and I. And Jesus said, Jesus said, pick up your cross and follow me. Evidently, he's leading you down the pathway to develop the same qualifications. Amen. Amen. Everybody say, look at somebody say, I'm so glad God is patient. Now he says, now, because I'm going to tell you something, in a time where it has become great darkness, in a time where wickedness, has, wickedness is all over the place, in a time where you can't tell a difference between a Christian and somebody in the world. Well, watch this. Isn't that what God gave Ricardo that dream about? They could not tell the difference between if it was God or not. In other words, he said, Leaders and people were running after something that perceived to be God. But you had to have the detail. See, this is the detail. What detail? So you're not going to get them details unless you humble yourself. Because humble yourself is equate. Watch this. Humble, save. Everybody with me? Humble yourself, save. Uh, deny, sanctify. <laughs> uh, humble yourself, be saved. Deny, sanctify. Sacrifice. I mean, suffering filled with the witness, filled with the Holy Ghost. You see how they go together? Humble yourself. You, you, you can't be saved unless you humble yourself to him. You can't be sanctified unless you deny yourself. And you cannot be filled with the Holy Ghost unless you're willing to suffer. Because that's a witness. To be a witness. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost, oh, you're going to suffer. Because watch this. Remember, let me, give you, let me give you scripture. Remember when Jesus told his disciples, your time has not yet come? Matter of fact, you can go into Jerusalem. They don't want you yet. But they're going to come an hour. They're going to come a time. And guess what? That when they got filled with the Holy Ghost and became a witness of that God, oh my God, they wanted to kill them. They was, they was ready to kill them then. They was ready. Guess what? They couldn't go into Jerusalem. They had to go into hiding. Now they, had, they were endowed with power. See, when you receive the Holy Ghost, now you have been endowed with power to walk what? In the spirit of truth. And, you, and when you walk in the spirit of truth, you don't hold back love because love, love operates with truth. And people are going to, they're going to despise you. They're going to want to reject you, especially in a time of, the, do you know what was interesting? I was watching the debates and, you know, uh, what's, the, what's, what's the black guy? Um, Carson. They were going at it so hard. He said, will somebody insult me? Listen, to be president in this nation, you must be willing to degrade somebody else to esteem yourself. Roman, what's the, the, the dude from Miami? Um, Rubio. Rubio came clean. Rubio was running a clean race until he started losing 
Now, all of a sudden, he has now gotten in a tongue tie with, with, with uh, Donald Trump, who knows how he knows how to master in insults and degrading. So now what we watch the debate for, not to find out the knowledge of what they're going to do in a nation, but to find out who can tell each other, who can tell. And you're going to tell me we're not in a wicked time? That the highest office of the land now is won through you degrading the person next to you? Not by the merits of your character? By how willing you're willing to degrade, by, you know, by how, watch this, how you're willing to operate outside of character? How you're willing to backbite slander? Now that's how the highest office in the land is. And you don't see the darkness up on the land. And you don't see why God says it's time to rise up. God says, man is a hypocrite. He can discern the weathers, the weather, but he don't pay attention to the signs. Of he says, I'm trying to show you something. I'm trying to show you something. But he says, unless, unless one to rise up now, one can, only when ri one rises up that he can produce something. Amen. I want to, uh, John 12, 24 says, read it. John chapter 12, verse 24. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains alone. It says, once, unless a, a grain of wheat falls Now, I love, I love what the, um, the, in, the, new, uh, the NI, the in, I'm sorry, the New International Version says, but if it dies, it produces many seeds. It says that for it, watch this. Remember what I said to you earlier. Remember what we said earlier. When one, for one to rise up to produce something, it must die. For it to die. Because you can't rise up unless you're willing to die first. And when you die, only when you're willing to die can you produce many more seeds. Only when you are willing to die can you produce more <laughs> Of what God wants to see. You can produce. That seed. As long as, my hand, as long as that seed stayed in my hand. It pleases nobody. Even though there's greatness in it. But until it fall to the ground. And die first. It abided by itself. Which, watch this. It abided by itself. It's self serving. But until it falls to the ground and die, now it can rise up and now it can produce seed, fruit for many, and seed. God says, rise up. Because now God says, I'm looking for some, I guess I'm looking for people who are going to build my kingdom. Who are going to humble themselves, deny themselves, be willing to suffer to build my kingdom in a society that's going to be so dark. They're not, it's not gonna, they're not going to like what you're building. Let's see it in scripture for, let's go in scripture and search it out for a minute. Let's go to Matthew 25. Let's go when Jesus begins to give parables and ref, uh, parables explaining the kingdom. Let's go to the parable, verse 14. Matthew chapter 25, verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven mm -hmm. is like a man traveling to a far country. Yes. Who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. Mm -hmm. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, mm -hmm. and to another one. Yes. To each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. So he called them and gave them five times, each one according to their own ability. That every man minister according to the faith. You know what I'm saying? To, in other words, to the faith he assigned them for, he gave them what they needed. Amen. Enough. He gave you enough. In the faith, let every, man, let every man minister according to his own faith. And Where you at? You understand? To where you at. Now, go ahead. 
verse 16. Mm-hmm. Then he who had received the five talents yes. went and traded with them mm-hmm. and made another five talents. So he reproduced. So, so in the kingdom, the father is about reproducing. He said, this is what he said. He said, in the kingdom, this is, he, said, he said, let me show you how the kingdom look in heaven. He said, when I, so therefore, he's not about a fruit, the seed remaining alone. In other words, God didn't give you something for you. He gave you something to reproduce. He said, that's why he loved, he said, if the vine don't bear no fruit, then it's good for nothing because I'm looking for fruit. I'm looking for you to reproduce. He said, that's why my process is humble, deny, sacrifice. Why? So I can see if you're in a position to reproduce, to build my kingdom. You cannot reproduce, you cannot build the kingdom unless you become the kingdom. And you cannot become the kingdom unless you're willing to deny yourself. Humble yourself. Pick up your cross. Suffer for his name's sake. The Bible says that suffering is not worthy to be compared to the glory. But then the Bible says Christ in you is the hope of glory. Key reading. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also he said see uh, he took his and reproduced now we found out what we said about the grains he said lest it fall to the ground and die first it cannot produce more seeds he said when god says when i give you something i'm not see watch this we think god giving us seed to put you on to put you on the dove show now that's where we at now to get a dove reward we think God gave you seed to blow you up and put you on TV. The, the, the pastors are this way. He gave whatever God gave you was to reproduce, to reproduce what? For souls. To reproduce for his kingdom. Because he said in his kingdom, what he gave you, he said, the one who had five, they went and multiplied. See, y'all, we, we better be, we better wait. Because see, man, I think that thing, that, that, that dream that God gave um, Ricardo. How many of y'all know that the Bible says that Jesus is going to come out of the sky? So watch this. This is funny thing about it. So some of it was true. See, the problem is, that's why the Bible says, if it was possible, in the last day, that even the very elect would be fooled. Because a lot of it is going to be true. But see, what Ricardo had to do was, he had to have the ability to discern deeper. He had to have, to have enough, no, enough, enough word to look deeper than just what it may look like. He had to know, what, what's it? If Christ is reproducing, and if Christ came to reproduce, he had to study Christ. If you notice, he said he, he had to look, he looked into his eyes, and, he, and I'm, I'm Ricardo told me about it. He said, look in his eyes, and he didn't have the flame in his eyes. And he looked for his hands, for the holes in his hands to represent the sacrifice. He was looking for, he said he was humble. He was looking to see if the things that God said lined up with us. Because, you know, some people are going to come talking with a lot of knowledge, and some people are going to come with a lot of signs and wonders. But do you see the signs of humility? Do you see the signs of denying themselves? Do you see the signs of suffering because he said many was coming to him many was like falling on their face and leaders were too I'm sure all them leaders who preached that prosperity message was falling on their face all the leaders who don't believe that you have to humble yourself and deny yourself and everybody that's self-serving gonna fall on it because they know, they know just a little bit about him coming out the sky. But they don't know what they should be looking for in him. Some of us, what I love about Ricardo's situation in the dream God gave him too, would I be able to discern him? How are you gonna discern if he's inside somebody you're supposed to be hooking up with? Because some people you're hooking up with, they're gonna look just like they're gonna have, they're gonna have, but if you look close, you'll see no holes in their hand. What are the holes in their hand? Them denying themselves and picking up their cross. They're about serving themselves always. Mm. And what in the dream? They was bowing down to him. What are, you, what are we bowing down to but don't have enough to see if it's Christ there? To see if it's Christ. Because it can say Christ with his mouth. Because Ricardo dream, it looked a lot like Christ, but he had to look deeper. 
It was funny, the things he had to look for. When, he, when I thought about him looking in the holes, he looked, it through the pre- he looked through the part where he died. He was looking for evidence that this person was willing to die. See, to die means to deny yourself, to humble yourself. See, when you ain't willing to die, you promote your own agenda. And you are, you are a person that loves the world and the things in it. And you're easily to be persuaded here and there. You, and you be like, that's not, they're a Christian. They go there. Because, you know, when you look at, I'm, even, when I'm, looking, even I'm, when I'm looking at the, the, the debates, Donald Trump said the other day, I'm a Christian. I love Christians. I'm a Christian. That's why they do my tax thing. But if you're a Christian, but don't the Bible tell you not to slander? To backbite, and let's not be so quick to judge him. I'm using that as an example. I'm not. Ju- I'm trying to reveal something because we need to watch. Our, look at ourselves. Me too. Uh, uh, watch. We we so easily so fool. Uh, Obama said, "I'm a Christian." So now a Christian declares a word contrary to the word of God. He evolves. We don't know. See, we don't know what we're looking for, and then we come bow down to this. But see, the most dangerous one are the ones who behind the pulpits who appear as angels of light who know the scripture so well but we and because we ain't study for ourselves we don't look for detail we don't look for detail i like the i like that that that, 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 that ricardo he said he looked in his eyes because the bible says in his eyes there there's no darkness no shadow of turning can you have you looked deep enough to see in somebody's eyes to see what's behind that is there a little light how much light in the eyes or is, the, or is the whole vessel dark? Have you looked in their hands to see how do they use their hands? Have you looked at the holes in their feet to see are they nailed to the cross? Is it evidence that they've been nailed to a cross? Deny themselves? Or they look like they got down? Did they get down for you? Mm. See, it was a lot in that dream. See, he says, but though, he said, I gave five talents. But they had, he said, in the kingdom, what I've given to you, you reproduce. So watch this. You got to be careful what you hook up with because what you hook up with can reproduce. Even, watch this. <laughs> The religious structure in Jesus' day, you know what Jesus told to him in his day? He said, your father was a liar from the beginning. Amen? He said, your father was a liar. And then he said, guess what he said? He said, and when you go convert one, you make them. He said, they, they knew how to reproduce too. But watch this. But on the outside, it looked like they were, they were, they were the children of God. But they were reproducing demons and children of hell. But guess what? Every Saturday... They came, in, they came in and read the Torah. They had the 12 stones. They had the dress. They, they like to make long prayers on the streets. They like to do all that stuff. But what was their heart? In their heart, was it humble? In their heart, did they deny themselves? In their heart, can they go through suffering? See, God said, I'm, I'm about to ra- rise up. I'm about to raise up some people. Keep reading. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. But he who had received one Uh went and dug in the ground. He went and put he went and put what he's supposed to. He went and took his and hid it. Go ahead. And hid his Lord's money. He hid it. He didn't go to multiply. He just held on what he had and hid it. Are we hiding what God gave us? Are you hiding your testimony? Are, you, are we hiding the words of wisdom God gave us? Are we hiding the gift of salvation that was given to us? Go ahead. After a long time, mm-hmm. the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. He said, now he's coming back to settle the accounts. How many know he's coming back to find somebody fruitful? He's coming, coming back because he's a fruitful God. How do I know? Because how do we know he's fruitful? Because out of him came you. Out 
out of him came you. Go ahead. So he who had received five talents uh -huh. came and brought five other talents. Sound like now we're gonna get some crowns on the we're gonna get some we're gonna get some stones on the on the crown now. He said he came and brought back five other talents. What happened? Saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Mm -hmm. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. God, I went to work for you. I don't know when you're coming back, but I took what you had me and went to work for you. And now there's five other females who wait until they get married. Now there's five other dudes who, who since you snatched out of me lying, there's five other dudes who don't lie and faithful. Go ahead. Verse 21. Mm -hmm. His Lord said to him, mm -hmm. well done, good and faithful How servant. How many want to hear this? When you stand before the king of kings, when you stand before the Lord of lords, the king, because he's talking about the kingdom. He said, well, I, my boss is good to hear. I say, well, good job. Okay. That, that's good. My wife is good to hear. My wife say, you know what? I like what you do. Well, boy, ain't none of that stuff. Can, none of them can compare to hearing God say it. And we do things for our boss because we want to hear them say it. We do things for our wife because we want to hear them say it. Should we not live a life to hear our father say it? Go, go ahead. You were faithful over a few things. He said you were faithful. You were faithful over faith. You were faithful over a few things. Go ahead. I will make you ruler over many things. He said now I'm going to give you more authority. Go ahead. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He said, enter into the joy of the Lord. Come on. God is pleased. Yes, God. Go ahead. He also, who received two talents, mm -hmm. came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. And you know what's awesome about this, man of God? See, I don't have to go do five. You don't have to do what Apostle did. You don't have to do what, I don't have to do what Patrick do. You don't have to do what uh, Heavenly do. Just take what he gave you. Stop looking at, see, yes, the problem is we right. got this new sermon. We got this new gospel where everybody keeping their eyes on the pastor, the prophet, or the pastor, or I want them houses. That may not be, just do what God has given you talent. Just give him what he gave you the ability to do. Because, see, when you start looking at other people, you will bury yours because you'll be like, man, I ain't going to be like, man, I, ain't, I, can't, I can't measure up. Don't measure up to nobody. Measure up to God. Take what he gave because that's the one you're trying to please. Yes, God. That's right. If God gave you over housewives, then do what? Multiply housewives. See, the problem with some, the problem with some people is you're trying, to take, you're trying to take a housewife anointed and turn it into a, a a, a, high, a high school auditorium. No. Just say, because and, and, why? It's the same power. Glory to God. But God just won't, he entrusts you. Do that to the fullest of your ability. Because somebody needs to know what it looks like to be a godly housewife. Somebody got to sow. We got to stop reinventing the wheel over again. Somebody, you got, but see the problem with some people can't sow is because you ain't got nobody humble. You, the older woman want to sow to the young woman, but they ain't humble. They want to do it. We keep, the God says, we keep, we, I can't get, I, said, I can't get nobody to rise up because I can't get nobody to get no victory. Because we keep, we, no, no, I got people keep going through the same old cycle. Nobody wants to, in other words, if somebody, if, if, if one dude here, come on, be us, can, can you, the Bible says, this is what the scripture says. The scripture says, he will exalt, exalt another higher than yourself. So guess what, when God bring you here, can you be one and put your hand like this to lift me to go here? Why should I have to reinvent the wheel? But, but the reason why people have to reinvent the because we so fleshly, we so carnal, we so worldly that we won't let God teach us. We won't let God groom us. We won't let God develop us because we're too prideful, especially men. We're not going to submit. We ain't going to humble us. And then the ones we submit out to don't catch, don't know no more than what you know. You got a man been married 20 years. Sitting there. You got a man married nine, over 20 years sitting back there. But you're going to sit down with somebody who ain't been married one 
year. God says, rise up. Humble yourself, deny yourself, and go through the suffering. But see, you might not like what that man in that one year, see that one that been married 20 years, he going to tell you how to go through some suffering. See, I can tell you how to go through some suffering. Oh, yes, I can. I can tell you how to go through some suffering, some financial suffering, and stand on the word of God. And don't take a side deal. I can tell you how to go through some emotional suffering. I can tell you how it feels. I can tell you how it feels when you feel like, man, I don't feel like I'm getting the love I need to get. I can tell you how that feels and still give you the victory. And I'm, see, you might not want to come to me because I'm not going to tell you to go buy her no flowers. I'm not going to tell you to go buy her no candy. I might tell you to pick up that broom. I might tell you to get in that house and help her clean up. I might tell you, you might want to hold your peace even when, she, when you feel like you're wrong and let God fight the battle. But you don't want to hear that. And then you want to hear from people who can't even maintain their own household. Because you're rebellious. You are unhumble. And then you say, that's not, well, it's the truth. It's simply the truth. You submit what God told you not to submit. You go where God told you not to go. And where God told you to go, you will not submit or humble yourself. And then you wonder why. And some of us, you setting yourself up for so much, you, ain't even, you wouldn't even have to go through that hell. If you would just humble yourself and deny yourself. What's humble yourself? To really come to God, to really say, you know what? I ain't never done this before. This ain't, I ain't never been here before or done this before. Bro, what do you have to tell me? And you, some of you, you need to be like Elijah. I ain't letting you go. I'm going to follow you. Until you get, uh-uh, humble yourself. But you know what I get? And probably I'll probably get the same thing. We get so many that want to humble themselves when they in the storm. You couldn't tell them nothing before the storm, but now the hell breaking loose. Pastor, what's up? Yeah, man. She tripping. I'm so glad that I went through the process so I won't hang up the phone on you while I'm watching my game. Because in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, you want to talk now? I couldn't get you to sit down and hear the word. I couldn't even get you to come to church on time. But now you want to talk. But the reason I'm humble because I was there. Yes. And had to understand. So I know, I know how it is to be a man. And then you want to humble yourself. Your pastor talking. You're like, I, I know. And then I had to learn it. I'm glad I was a quick learner, though. Because I got to the place where my pastor, when he came in the back door, I'm back to ready to bring his briefcase in. Because I found out to really be exalted, to really become a leader, you have to be a great follower. That's why when my pastor called me over to the other side. He said, can you come back? I cannot tell him no. No, uh-uh. I can't tell him. Why? Because I'm going to serve him. I'm going to serve him because I want to be great. Greatness is to serve another, not to look to be served. And usually the ones he's going to ask you to serve are the ones you might not really want to serve. Because you know why? Because they're going to be the ones in your grill. They're going to be the ones who ain't going to really say what you want them to say. They're not going to be down with you doing things. You know, if, 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 it's, nine, if it's 10 o'clock, 9.30, to get off the phone, get off the phone. They're not going to have excuses for your side deals. But you're going to become great. And you will have more than a three-year marriage. At least three years on paper. Because, you know, the three years on paper usually was over after a year and a half. That's the world. Y'all know that's the world. They go three years, but it's usually over after the year and a half. They just do three years on paper. Because she done went out, tipped out. He done tipped out. They done cheated. They, they just got some, they got some years on paper. But it's been already messed up. Why? Because of lack of pride, denying themselves, and being, they can't suffer. They can't suffer. 
And I don't, I'm not, I'm not coming to you as one that is perfect, but I can come to you as one that's perfected. God has matured me in things. Yes. We got to stop. Come on, rise up. We got to stop reading. Yo, kid, come on, we don't stop this. Yo, kid's going to be doing the same thing over and over again. God, like, who going to be the difference? And then we're going to be trying to preach kids to be saved all over. God, be like, I wish I could get a generation who can train their kids to be soldiers. Amen. 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 Keep reading. Verse 23. Mm -hmm. His Lord said to him, mm -hmm. well done, good and faithful servant. Yes. You have been faithful over a few things. Mm -hmm. I will make you ruler over many things. God says when you can be fruitful, when he can rise you up, he calls you faithful. When God can rise, why, do, why does God call them faithful servant? Because why is the Lord calling them faithful? Because he knew they had to go through the process to get their fruit. They had to go to labor, meaning that he knew that they had to go humble themselves. They had to deny themselves. Now watch this. They are doing this not for themselves because it's not their money. Y'all better get this. They on the victory. I better get this. They are on the. They, oh my God, we better get this. They are not on the. They are not on the battle. They are not out there multiplying their money. They are multiplying his money. That means they are sacrificing suffering for somebody else. Come on, it ain't that bad if, if my if it's my fire tower. That's ten for me. Now I'm, I'm I'm hooked up. But they out there, he said he gave them that money. He's coming back. To buy, he said he's coming back for what he gave them. God says, I gave it to you. There's nothing you had on your own. I gave it to you. Now multiply what I've given you. Don't bury it. Don't bury what I you don't. Your wisdom didn't come from you. Ooh. Your knowledge didn't come from you. Come on. Your wisdom didn't come from you. Your knowledge didn't come from you. Your spiritual, your, your ability to give didn't come from you. Your kindness didn't come from you. I know it. You know, I, I, I know it. Because if I look at my situation in my house, me would be divorced. God has me married. So me loving my wife, and my, my wife telling me, I really love you, came, I'm able to see the fruit of real love through God. So he won't, so wives, multiply what God gave you to your husband. Husbands, multiply what God gave. Did he not give you forgiveness? I dare you hold back forgiveness from your husband. When he gave it to you, multiply it. Don't give it to him because he deserves it. Give it to him because he get, it was given to you. He don't have to earn it. You didn't earn yours. You didn't earn your kindness. You didn't earn your forgiveness. You was a liar and cheater just like me. A deceiver. You didn't earn anything. It was given to you. So how, how dare you make somebody else feel like they got to earn it? You better multiply it. Go ahead. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Enter into the joy. That's what, that's what we're going, right? How many of you all... Whatever God give you, you want to be able to take it, multiply it, that God can say, now I'm going to bring you more joy from it. Ooh, obedience to God. Well, he said, enter into the joy of your Lord. You've been faithful. You ain't not, he ain't say, guess what? You done suffered. After a while, he said, now I'm going to stab you. Now enter into the joy of your Lord. Go ahead. Verse 24. Oh, here we go. Then he who had received the one talent uh -huh. came and said, mm-hmm. Lord, yeah, I knew you to be a hard man, Ooh. <laughs> reaping where you have not sown. He was a trip. And gathering where you have not scattered seed. Mm. And I was afraid, and I went and hid your talents in you the ground. You know what he's saying? He said, God, you ain't do none of this work. You wasn't going to do none of the work. You... You want to sow where you ain't, you want to sow, you want to reap where you ain't sow yet. See, he didn't understand what was given to him. He didn't understand the ability for him to do the gift, for him to sow, to take what God gave him was a blessing. 
for you to be, for God to give you something is a blessing. And for you to come back at God and say, oh, you want to reap what you ain't sow? In other words, God, I'm not, what you gave me, I'm going to hold it down. Go ahead. And I was afraid, and I went and hid your talents in the ground. How many of you know fear will paralyze you to, from bringing God glory? Fear of what? Rejection. Fear, because you're not going to go to somebody minister because you, you're, you're afraid of rejection. That's why we do, that's why I ask you all to come to street ministry. Those who are, why? Because we, because worst thing, the first thing we, God has created street ministry for was to kill being shy. Because being shy is not of God. Because being shy is connected to fear. And God is not mad at us. He just has to get rid of that shyness. Because if he don't get rid of the shyness, you're not going to multiply. Because you're going to be afraid to talk to people. You're going to be afraid to share. You're going to be afraid. And see, when you self when you self-serve, when you self-absorb, you're not going to tell people your testimony because you don't want them to see you, even though that's not you no more. Now, they don't need to know I used to do. They, they see me as a good person. Now, they see me as perfect. Now, that's good. I'm, I've been always a Christian. I've been always saved with the Holy Ghost. I've been always righteous. Go ahead. So we can finish this up. Go ahead. Look, there you have what is yours. He said, you, he, he said I'm giving you back what you gave me with no return. Mm. Okay. Let's see what he say to him. Verse 26. Mm -hmm. But his Lord answered and mm -hmm. said to him, you wicked and lazy servant. He said, you wicked and lazy servant. Let me tell you why he's saying calling them wicked. Anything that's not done in faith is what? Sin. That's wickedness. If God is a God that reproduces, if he says when he plants a seed, he predicts, produces, uh, expects fruit, then therefore for us to take what God give us and not to produce anything is wickedness. You want, even if you have a little bit, if you have a grain of, if you have a grain of, if you got that much faith, you don't have to, the woman that was at the well, she ain't have, she ain't go to theological school. She wasn't no deep theological, she wasn't no, she wasn't no Jewish. The woman at the well, what she had was, watch what, the seed she had, what she received was at the well. And then she was able to go to the men and say, let me tell you about a man that told me everything about me. And many can, guess what, she reproduced. See, we trying to reproduce. We, see, you, you looking at somebody else to reproduce. Tell your life story. See, I know we got, I know, I know what it is. I know what it is, y'all. See, we don't, we don't got caught up in, 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 in the church, in the religious order, because they don't went to theological school and they don't learn how to do homiletics and they don't learn how to properly, they want to say, well, this is the proper way you should be able to, um, you know, expound on, 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 on when you're preaching a sermon. You want to be able to go in first and you want to be able to dig out the matter and you want to be able to take, and then be, now, you know, when I, when I, when I studied Jesus, as a, you know what they did? They just told a story. They just told what happened. They told how Jesus affected their life and who he was. Guess what? And they weren't divided. You know how I wasn't divided? You know why God doing away, why God going to do away with all division? Let me tell you why God coming to one body. Why he come to one Because look at the, the Bible says he has to do away with it. Do you know how many authors in the Bible? How many books in the Bible? 66. God, he is so wise in trying to show us the unity of his body. He took 66 people and brought one book. And guess what? With no contradiction. God is, come on. Can't, no man wrote that. 66 people, different. I mean, and yet, some Jews, some black, I mean, wrote it and put it all together. So that means the black, the black church, the white church, if, he, if the Bible developed like that, shouldn't his body be developed like that? How can I say I don't need Apostle Gene? That's crazy. That would be like, Paul saying, I don't need Peter. How can I say, I don't need Bishop Curry? Wouldn't that be like um, James saying he don't need Titus? 
How can you say you don't need your sister? Aren't you missing a piece of the puzzle? But see, this is what we think today. We think one man has all the pieces. When Jesus put 12, and then in the Bible, they put 66. To put together the pieces. We've seen, we like to sing some, I need you. We do need one another. See, Prophet Barber is a piece that some young man might be going, you might, you might want to hook up with that. Why? So it can build a bigger picture of God's glory. And that's why God preached last Sunday also. Now, you don't leave nobody behind. You know, man, get back in position. Why? Because the bottom line, I need you to be in position. I need your glory. God needs that glory. But see, you ever notice, see, Michelle, what happens a lot of times in households, right? Kids can bring division because they play over here. They play, play, play mama against daddy because they don't know, because they don't understand humility, denying, or, or sacrificing. But leaders should not play division. Leaders should not feed into the division of kids playing. That's why I thought Ricardo Dream was interesting that leaders were going. Because the leader set the mind of the sheep. That's how Jesus set it up. He said, how would, I know, how would they know unless I sent them up? And see, he sent you a preacher that went through the process that had to be humble, that had to know how to decide, not, not deny stuff and suffer. He's not perfect, but God, but God, but God perfected him mature enough, established him, settled him, and strengthened him to be able to give you what God wants you to have. Because a true leader already knows his job is to ex make sure that you do not what he's doing, but greater. Because it's bigger than his church. The true leader understands that you're building a kingdom. I ain't, no, I ain't got no vision. People asked me a long time ago when we moved here, Apostle, <laughs> you got the church, man. You really, you, I know you finally glad what I'm in. My vision was never a church. That's why I believe God started me outside. I never sat down and, Apostle, did I ever, uh, Papa Bob, did I ever come to you and say, man, I really want a building? Oh, I, matter of fact, if God wouldn't have shifted us, I would have stayed outside. No rent, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Unlimited congregation, you know what I'm saying? People all over the house. AC. Heat when you need it. You know, ain't nobody get a heat stroke when we was out there. Somebody might have got bit by a spider, but hey, hospital. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? God was good. You no. Know? Guanos will come around every once in a while, hear the sermon. You know what I'm saying? And if you got lucky, a bird would boo boo on you just to let you know he's present. But one thing I learned about being outside, God, the way God brought me up and the way he brought up, that God raised some warriors outside. See, some of y'all don't, some, see, some of them warriors, it, I remember nights, it was like so cold, and them cats would never miss a service. And they would have blankets on, and you could see four rows, and they sitting, and people looking at them like they, but you know what, I know God ministered to the people, because them people, oh my God, in the sun, they worshiping, demons being cast out, God moving mightily outside. Didn't know, watch it, it was no shame in praise and worship. Because everybody had to stand and do praise and worship. Amen. And so coming in this building, don't change nothing. So the body, why? Because I understood one body in Christ. I understood what God was meant. One body in Christ. And that one body in Christ, in, in, one body in Christ, in Christ, he has to destroy them things in our heart that we can walk in love. And until he destroyed the things in our heart to walk in love, we're not going to be united like God wanted. We need to bear fruit with each other first. Let me show you so we can go home. Key read. You wicked and lazy servant. Mm -hmm. You knew that I reap where I have not sown mm -hmm. and gather where I have not scattered seed. Mm -hmm. 
So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers, and that my coming I will have received back my own with interest. Now remember that this started out with us understanding this is how the kingdom. Go ahead. So take the talent from him mm -hmm. and give it to him who has ten talents. He said, take it. I'm going to take it from him and give it to the one who has ten. When we told the one over ten, if you be faithful over that, I'm going to make you rule over more. He increased them. Though, see, some of y'all want, it's so funny. You want your finances to increase? How many want the finance increases? Come on, don't lie. <laughs> how many of us, how many, how many of you want things that you wouldn't even work for? He just gave you the answer. He said, go work for him. Mm -hmm. Work for him. Yes, Lord. That, let God be able to trust you at your job. Let God be able to trust you that he can say, because you know what ain't about your job? It's about souls. Amen. Go ahead. Verse 29. Mm -hmm. For to everyone who has, mm -hmm. more will be given. There you go. He just told you. To everyone that has, what did he say? More will be given. If you know how to be what? Fruitful. Because remember now, the one who he had, but he didn't get more because he wasn't faithful with what he had. But to everyone who has, he said more. He said, guess what? If you work for me, I'm going to give you more. Yes, Lord. Go ahead. And he will have abundance. But he will, and he'll have what? Abundance. He said, I'm going to make sure that you have abundance. Because why? He know that you're not going to harvest it up for yourself. He know that your number one agenda is to multiply his kingdom. But when your agenda is to multiply yourself. Go ahead. Let me say this too. Because I just saw, I heard something. You can, and you can multiply yourself. Go read Genesis. There's only one problem at the end of that. Your father not going to be pleased. Go ahead. But from him who does not have, mm -hmm. even what he has will be taken away. Mm -hmm. And cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing. He of said, I'm going to cast him where? Into the outer darkness. Isn't that the same thing he said about the, if the brine don't bear for fruit, bind it up and cast it into the fire? fire? Go ahead. God is serious about this multiplying. But, but let's see. Let's see what it looked like a little bit. I just want to see what it looked like when we, are, when, we are, when, we are, when we rise up and are producing, fruit, when, we are, when we are reproducing. Go ahead, read. Keep reading. Verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all of the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. Mm -hmm. All the nations will be gathered before him, mm -hmm. and he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. So we see God going to come. He's going to sit on the throne. He's going to be doing a dividing. Go ahead. Verse 33. Uh -huh. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, yeah. but the goats on his left. Mm -hmm. Then the king will say to those on his right hand side, Come, you who are blessed by my father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. He said, come inherit that kingdom that, that's in heaven that produces, reproduces. Like it was written. Go ahead. For I was hungry and you gave me food. Look what he's saying. Listen, I want you to see what he's saying. He's saying, a life. He said, when I was hungry, you gave me food. See, watch this. God fed you, so he wants you to reproduce. He feeds you. So, he, so when somebody's hungry, he wants you to reproduce. Go ahead. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. God said, he gives you drink, so he wants you to reproduce. Because some of us, we want to we make this thing like it's like, like huge things. God said, no, the simplicity things of life. Because when you come to God, you understand he the one gives me food. He, gives me drink. he said, reproduce it. When I'm hungry, when somebody's hungry, feed them. When somebody thirsty, give them. See, this is what we have gotten from. This is what we got. This is what we did. Came separate. So we're not looking to to help to feed the hungry, to give someone thirsty some drink. You know, it's funny. You, we, you it's good that you want to give apostles some to drink. I, I appreciate it, but I hope you give somebody else some to drink too. That that that, uh, that may be thirsty. 
take some, because you know, that's why I'm like, we want to, people, cause we got these churches, they do everything for the pastor. Oh, man, the pastor got, man, pastor, they, everybody, and I'm not saying he's not worth it. The Bible says, what, uh, give honor what honor is due. But the bottom line, he said, but also, we ought to feed one another. Give, the, give each other drink. Go ahead. I was a stranger, and mm-hmm. you took me in. You took me in as a stranger. Come on. I was naked, and you clothed me. You gave me clothes. Instead of talking about somebody, what they ain't got clothes to wear, did we take them and give them clothes? Did you take them shopping? Go ahead. I was sick, and you visited me. You visited me when I was sick. I was in prison, and you came to me. How many of y'all know that the things that he is naming all cause someone else to be blessed? Look what he's saying. Look what he's saying. Everything that he has just named so far has nothing with God, nothing to what you're getting. It has you blessing someone else. Anybody see what God is saying? Rise up. Go ahead. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when do we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? When do we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when do we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say unto them, Mm -hmm. Assuredly I say to you, and as much as you have done to one of the least of these, my brethren, you've done it to me. See, what's interesting, he's saying, it ain't that you did it to me, you did it to my people. When you've done it to the least, What is he showing us? When you begin to bear fruit, it should be revealed on how you treat other people. The way we treat other people is how we please God. Everything he just named had nothing to do with that person serving himself. When you was hungry, Lord, I want you fed me. When thirsty, you gave me drink. When I was naked, you gave me clothes. When I was a stranger, you took me in. When I was sick, you came to visit me. When I was in jail, you came to visit me. They didn't even, watch it. They said, when we did this to you, God, you know what that tells me? That at that moment, they weren't thinking, they were just spiritually moving in righteousness. They, in other words, they weren't looking, because this was, this, come on, watch this. You know how we looked with it? We looking to do something for God to get them accolade points. Come on, y'all know how they, we looking, God, look what I did. Yeah, but even though God says, don't let what you do and be before all men, don't let the right hand, but we do, oh, look what I did. We sit on temple, look what I did. But what they were doing, they didn't even, they, in their mind, they never thought about, I'm doing this to God. They just saw a need. Amen. To them, it wasn't about trying to, when they step, get to heaven, trying to do this stuff because, you know, this is, this week is giveaway week. So we're going to give away this week is go feed the hungry on Thanksgiving. So we don't, we don't want to be event Christians. Event Christians only do something on an event. And then we go right back to what we, he said, but those who I have produced, they're not event Christians. They're life Christians. Amen. And when somebody hungry, they give them something to eat. When they're thirsty, they give them something to drink. When they're naked, they buy them something, they, they give them clothes. And guess what? You don't have to be rich to do stuff like this. You might have to just split your sandwich. Amen? Go ahead. Verse 41. Mm-hmm. Then he will say to those on the left hand, mm-hmm. Depart from me, you cursed, and to the everlasting fire, Prepare for the devil and his angels. Mm -hmm. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick or in prison and did not minister to you. Now I want y'all to see this. 
They're asking the same questions as the one who did it. But there's only one difference. The other one had a life that did it for people. They say, my Lord, but yet in their life, it didn't affect anybody. In their life, they didn't affect anybody. They didn't give nobody food. They didn't give nobody drink. In their life, they say they had a seed, but that seed had no fruit. The other ones had a seed, and their life all the way through it reflected fruit. Go ahead. Then he will say to them, as surely I say to you, and as much as you did not do to one of the least of these, you did not do to me. He said, because you didn't do it to the least. See, it's something, and y'all have heard me say this over and over again. You will keep hearing me saying it because the Spirit of the Lord keeps leading me to saying, We think our walk with God is totally evident on how we talk about we're crazy about God. And God says your walk with me is totally evident on how you're crazy about one another. That's why some people, they love going to church. They just don't like dealing with one another. We don't want to love. We don't want to. And God, he keeps revealing that. He says, how can you say, you, how, can you, how can you say you love me whom you cannot see and not love your brother whom you see every day? He said, you know, we, he said, we know we have walked out of depth into life in the way we love the brother. He said, rise up, please. Bear fruit that your brothers, that, that, that the world will know I sent you by the way you follow my word, which will be revealed in the way that you treat, love, and act around one another. He said, if we truly understood the gospel, we wouldn't be going around sexing one another, cursing each other out. We would watch how we dealt with one another. But because we have this false gospel that makes you perceive that as long as my relationship right with God, I'm all right. But he said, but he just told them, you can't walk into the kingdom. You, you, you going, you, he said, you're wicked servants because they say, they say, God, when did we do this to you? He said, well, you, when you've done it to the least, you are serving me. So God said, love, watch it, watch God measure. Y'all got to get this. In love, he says, love your brothers. He said, we know that we say, the Bible says, um, how do we know? Well, let me say it the right way. The Bible tells us. How can we say we love God whom we cannot see and not love our brothers whom we see every day? So the Bible says in love, we should be able to know God's love through the way we love one another, right or wrong. And then the Bible go to works. Because how many know those things he named? Those works. He said, also, in the, if you love me, your love should be motivated by your works and your works should be to others. That reveal you're serving me. But we say, no, God, my love is to you, and I really love you, God, but I don't love Michelle. And God, I say, God, I really love you, and I'm going to do everything in the church. I'm going to sweep the floor. I'm going to do all this stuff in the church. But when, but when that sister step on, if that sister step on, my, on the trash pile, I'm going to curse her out. <laughs> and God like, huh? And God has been trying to talk for you. We got clicks. We got these things going on. And God keeps telling you, I'm not with it. You're not with me. You, you, your heart is wrong. Your heart, because you're try, we're trying to think, as long as I'm doing this for God, I'm doing, I'm understanding. And God is trying to tell us, well, if you are going to, if you are going to, what was the word he gave this morning? Rise up. Then the fruit that should be rising up. If you are dead, then the fruit of the tree is not for you. The shade of the tree is not for you. The death is not for you. Somebody should be partaking from what, what you're, you're being able to rise up unless you take it and hide it. And if you take it and hide it, then the only one you're happy with is about what you think God's going to do for you. But if we believe the true gospel, then guess what? The world would know how we love, in the way we love one another, that we are... The world will know in the way we love one another that we are walking in Scripture. Because Jesus died to bear fruit for Jesus died on that cross to produce our souls to be saved. That's the gift you receive. Life for his life. He 
He already told us, I know what you are in need of before you even ask me. Please don't get my gospel confused with this. I reign on the just as well as the unjust. Do not think that's my gospel. Have no thought for those things. That's not my gospel. I got you. I had you before you were saved. You didn't have to get saved for me to give you a job. You didn't have to get saved for me to give you something to drink. You didn't have to get me get saved for somebody for me to feed you. You didn't have to get saved for me to clothe you. You partook of my earth when you really when you when you rebelled against me anyway. Then what did you save me for, God? I saved you from death and to transform your heart, your life. Why? So Cain won't slay Abel no more. So Cain will not slay Abel anymore. When sin took place in the family, Cain slew Abel. And in the family, when sin took place, it divided the family where Cain's generation and, and Seth generation from Seth from the descendant of Abel generation were divided, but they were a one family. Y'all better get this. They were divided, but sin had two brothers, two blood brothers, divided and creating two different generations because of sin. So what makes us think that Jesus is gonna come back and bring the ministry of reconciliation? And you just think you think that means just to God? The evidence of his reconciliation is Cain. Go get Abel. Let's go get Cain, Seth. Let's go minister the love of Cain. Let's go minister to God. Let's go minister the love of God to Cain, Seth. And let's do it after we go through the process that we don't be like they do in the book of Genesis where they go merge and then become more violent. Don't compromise with Seth. Seth, don't compromise with Cain. Go show him the love of God. But you see what happened. Seth, <laughs> his sons began to merge with Cain's daughters. The daughters of men, I mean, da Cain's daughters began to merge with Seth. And now they got a generation that's, God said, all of his evil. He looking down and saying, can I find anyone? And he found Noah. You have to ask yourself a question. What happened to Seth, all the people in Seth's generation? That all he could find, it was two generations. By the, time he, by the time he brought judgment, all he could find was Noah. And that's what's been happening over the matter. It's been happening over years and years and years. What we do is just merge with the world. And God says, let me raise up another remnant. I need somebody to rise up because the religious order today, do you know that the religious order, this pastor sat up there and he went and endorsed, he goes and endorsed Donald Trump. I wouldn't care. The same way somebody, in, who, who was crazy, they, the same way they endorsed Obama. You are, endorsed, you are endorsing men. You can't, you can't look and see at the hands. You can't see in the eyes that those men are not those who are, do you know, do, you're endorsing somebody to operate in a system that says there's a separation between church and state. Someone that person, in a, in a nation that tells you, yes, we do, not, we do not allow the ways of God to operate in our business. We, we don't see that. They took the, they took the Ten Commandments out the courtroom. They don't want to, if a president get up there and start quoting scriptures, and he, if he start talking about the truth of the word of God, he going to be like, they going to be like, you done lost your mind. We didn't look for the holes when he was, we didn't look for the holes in his hand or in his feet when he was endorsing Planned Parenthood. We didn't realize God wouldn't do that. I'm not talking about nobody perfect. David wasn't perfect. I'm talking about somebody who's mature, established, strengthened, 
and stable in suffering. Meaning that will not stand down because of God, will not stand out because the world will not ride out with what they believe. Amen? Amen. Is that it? Verse 46. And they will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. He says they will go away to everlasting punishment. I want it, God wants us to see, to rise up is fruit. To rise up is to be able to produce what God has placed in you for somebody else. Your life order, your life order, don't tell me you don't have, you got a testimony. Man, I don't know, I'm nobody. What you mean you nobody? Anybody saved in here? Who saved you? All the woman at the well said, let me tell you about a man that told me everything. God didn't tell you about you? So guess what? But like I said, I know. We don't got so smart. We don't, we don't outsmart God. Now, instead of street ministry, letting somebody got to go have a Ph.D. in street ministry. Good thing the woman in the well, she would have been in trouble if she would have been born this day. She would like, no, you can't go tell them about God yet. You need to come down and have a pitch. No, you can't. She, she wasn't opening the church. She was leading them to Christ. Right. You don't need a church. You don't need a position in, this, in a church to lead somebody to Jesus Christ. You don't. You don't have to be a pastor or a teacher. All you have to do is be a son or a daughter who was redeemed by your father and know that it was your father who saved you. And what, what am I saying to them? Tell them what God did for you. Tell them your testimony. See, some of us, we don't even, some of us the reason why we keep going back to playing because you ain't denounced where you've been yet because you're still playing with it. Well, I'm not going to really testify about me being sell about God saving me and being holy sexual because I'm still laying on my back. Oh, okay, then I really wouldn't advise you to give that testimony either. I'm not going to testify about me not lying because, you know, what if I lie? How many of you know when you start testifying about the, 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 the things about God, guess what? You behold yourself accountable. And you also say, God, I trust you to sustain me. God is good. Let's rise up. And let's, let us, I just want to, but let's rise up. I don't mean rise up for real. I mean, let us rise up according to the word of God. Let us be willing to lose it that we may gain it. Amen? If there's anybody under my voice that has never accepted Jesus,